Movement for Democratic Change, the MDC, which is, of course, the main opposition. And we know that enjoys support from external factors in the West, for example, for an overthrow or change of the regime in uh, Zimbabwe. So it seems that ZANU-PF itself has sort of got an appetite now for some sort of change, of course, underpinned by some of the changes and developments that have been happening in recent weeks that um, our previous speaker, in fact, pointed to. Of course, there's reality in terms of multiple attempts over the years as well to curtail any uh, individual other than the wife of the president, uh, Robert Mugabe, coming to power. Uh, we had the previous situation of the former vice president, Joyce Mujuru, also being uh, removed when it appeared that there could be a situation where uh, the, the term of Robert Mugabe would come to an end, and very much a similar situation uh, developing in uh, the country at the moment. But if we look at, for example, Emerson Ngangwa, uh, he, of course, has a long standing within the ZANU-PF party since 1963. Looking also at the tweets that is now coming out from his side uh, on Twitter, for example, he is trying to allay fears of a takeover of a coup. And in fact, if I were to just look at uh, what he posted uh, about six hours ago, he was saying that uh, he is back in Zimbabwe. We know that he was in South Africa, that this is the beginning of a transitional phase that will pave the way for peaceful, free and fair and democratic elections. So looking at these tweets, there are now other questions that have been po posed. And one of them is whether the South African government, to which extent was it aware of the potential of these type of changes taking place. The South African government at this stage is saying that it is monitoring the situation. It is saying that there's a delegation on its way from Zimbabwe to meet with the government here, and they will then take it from there. So very vague statements coming from the South African government. Another question is whether China had anything to do uh, with this coup or sort of gave a green light. Of course, China and Zimbabwe have some very good relations. There's good trade uh, interaction between the two countries as well. And a question of whether the uh, meeting and the visit of the uh, military army general, Constantino Ch Chiwenga, uh, just last week to China may have had anything to do with the developments that we are now witnessing in the country. Of course, the, the statements that are coming out from China is that that was a very normal visit. It had nothing to do with anything of, of the situation. But of course, I think when it comes to politics and when it comes to diplomacy, you'll never get an outright admission when it comes to situations such as this. Right, right. The interesting and, thing, however... And of course, we're keeping our my, eyes on that uh, situation, very fluid situation there uh, in Zimbabwe taking place. Appreciate you. In the United States, copyright law allows for the fair use of copyrighted material under certain limited circumstances without the prior permission from the owner. Under the law, determinations of fair use take into account the purposes of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the work used in relation to the work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Other jurisdictions may have similar copyright provisions protecting fair use or fair dealing. If you are uncertain as to whether a specific use qualifies as a fair use, you should consult a qualified copyright attorney. You have the right to take it down.